Guys, kinat ko lang yung video para makapuha ko and then I could test yung camera. Nakamount na siya dito sa my ring light. And hindi ko pa siya inayos ng bonggang bongga kasi gusto ko na muna matapos tong video na to and medyo mahaba na siya. I -re receive my report from the outgoing nurse. And then, hasabihin sa'yo na outgoing nurse, ito yung sickest patient, ito yung pinaka medyo okay-okay na pasyente. I-divide yun according sa acuity na pasyente. Sabihin mo, o sa LPN, ito yung pasyente mo, ito yung magiging pasyente ko. So, doon yung panang i-divide uh, during that time, kung ano yung magiging pasyente mo, and then magiging pasyente ng LPN. And then, kailangan, since ikaw yung hub lead, kailangan alam mo lahat yung nangyayari sa galawan ng mga pasyente ng, ng LPN mo. Kasi, meron kayong tinatawag na hub, uh, comfort rounds, and meron kang tinatawag na huddle na kailangan magre-report ka sa charge nurse and alam mo ka dapat kung ano nangyayari sa pasyente mo at sa pasyente sa, sa, sa buong pasyente ng hub mo. So, medyo mahirap yung ganung responsibility kasi medyo mabigat na nga yung busy na yung pasyente mo and then at the same time, kailangan alam, alalay ka pa rin sa pasyente ng LPN mo. And, uh, wala naman ako naging problema sa, sa may sa previous unit ko kasi lahat ng LPN na nakatrabaho ko tsaka RN doon sa my unit ko is very very competent and I love them and uh, lakit, nakita ko talaga yung eagerness nila talaga na magtrabaho and then now documentation guys so once na makapag uh, na homer yung report sa pasyen uh, sa, sa offgoing nurse you need to document meron kami tinatawag doon sa my uh, hospital namin na Sunrise Clinical Manager ayun yung Uh, ginagamit namin uh, parang pinaka um, program kung saan kami lahat nag nagda-document, nag nag nagsasign ng medication, nag-check ng orders. So doon, uh, dinodocument lang namin na transfer of care received from uh, this nurse, uh, patient received on 2 uh, liters of oxygen, awake and alert, laying supine and stretcher, uh, respiratory easy and regular, uh, unlabored breathing, no signs of symptoms of uh, respiratory distress noted. Uh, call bell and personal items uh, please within reach. Mga ganun lang. Uh, uh, we'll continue to monitor throughout the shift. Ganun yung mga ginagawa kong transfer report. Um. Pero, syempre, iba-ibang nurse, iba-iba din yung mga transfer report na binibigay nila. Ayun yung ginagawa ko din sa emergency kasi just to save my license, once na-receive ko yung report sa my offgoing nurse, sinusulat ko agad kung paano ko sila na-receive. For example, may NG yung pasyente. Patient receive laying uh, supine with head of the bed at 45 degrees, NG to right nare uh, intact, uh, connected to low suction at 20 millimeter mercury, uh, tapos lalagay mo yung output, ganyan-ganyan, patient din na concerns, ganyan-ganyan. Tapos meds dispensary. So dito sa Canada, very high tech kami kasi pinaprevent talaga namin yung med error at saka yung med discrepancy. So, meron kami sa, dito sa Canada yung tinatawag naming ADC, Automated Dispensing Machine, kung saan uh, bago kami makapag-dispense ng medication, kailangan namin gumamit ng aming finger pads. So, uh, i-enroll namin sa relay namin sa may machine, tapos ilalagay namin yung finger pad namin para uh, alam ng machine na kami yung nurse na kumukuha ng gamot. And then, itatype namin yung, pasyenteng, yung last name na pasyente. And then, magpapapap na yung mga medications na meron yung pasyente na in-order ng, 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 ng doktor. And then, ikiklik lang namin yung uh, medication na yon And then, magbubukas na yung cabinet. And then, magpiflip na yung tray kung nasaan yung medication. Tapos, kung wala kami ng isa. And then, kapag narcotic naman, papabilang sa amin ng, 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 uh, ng machine kung ilan yung narcotic na nasa loob. And then, papabilang sa amin after kung ilan yung narcotic na kinuha namin. So, very, very safe siya. And then, para na rin ito prevent discrepancy. Kasi, siguro, siguro lang, hindi ko alam, hindi ko alam, pero, hindi ko, hindi ko rin alam kung totoo to. Pero, in the past kasi, may mga discrepancy talaga sa mga narcotics na nawawala. And hindi namin alam kung saan napupunta yung mga narcotics na. So, much safer itong ADC na ginagamit namin ngayon. So, itong, ah, uh, sa unit namin, sa previous unit na nag-work sa inpatient unit, meron kami mga service worker and then healthcare aides and then meron kami uh, unit clerks. Ang service worker, ang pinaka-role nila is to, uh, meron kami nurse educator pala sa floor. Ang nurse educator, so may manager, ang uh, manager nasa floor morning talaga, Mondays to Fridays, 8 to 5, minsan 8 to 4. Sorry, 8 to 4 talaga, 8 to 4, hindi pala 8 to 5. And then yung service worker, it depends. Kapag may budget, 
uh, na doon sila ng weekends. Kapag wala, wala talaga sila ng weekends. Kapag short, pag nagsikol sila, this, hindi na namin sila nire-replace. So, ang nangyayari, na doon sila ng uh, weekdays, uh, ng days and evenings. So, so, from 7 to 3 and then 3 to, uh, 3 to 11. And ang ginagawa na nila is, uh, nag-fill sila ng mga ng mga blankets and then yung mga cups and uh, mga spoons yung sa may nutrition area namin and then yung mga yung mga uh, uh, saline bags namin so they they make sure na kompleto kami ng mga gamit and then kapag rin nasiraan kami ng uh, IV pump or uh, another scanner ini-infer namin sila tapos sila yung tumatawag sa may engineering or kaya sa may uh, House engineering siya, tayo siya hindi ko alam kung uh, engineering department. And then sila na yung nakikipag-coordinate sa may engineering department. Sila na magsasend equipment sa engineering department. And then hopefully the next day is magawa na yung, uh, yung equipment na yun. Guys, tamay siya ko na rin yung unit clerk. Sa, sa may unit namin, kung saan ako nag-work before, misan isa or dalawa yung unit clerk namin. Sila yung nag, uh, sila yung nag, nagayos ng papers for example mayroong admission sa unit so yung nagayos ng papers kami na yung nag-fill up ng papers and then kapag may discharge binigay namin yung mga discharge papers sila nagayos nun and then sila yung sumasagot ng mga telephone calls or kaya kapag uh, nagpa-page kami ng physician sila yung nagta-transfer ng calls para makausap namin yung physicians sa may emergency ang unit clerk is very very important sa may emergency kasi kapag gusto namin makausap yung doktor hindi kami pwede mag-page sa emergency uh, kami yung Nagsasabi sa may unit clerk na, would you be able to page a uh, hospitalist team or MTU team or cardiac team? Gusto namin siya makausap. So sila nagpipage and then uh, sila sabi nila sa amin kung tumawag na yung, uh, yung hospitalist team or yung uh, specialist na yun and then papapark nila yung call and then doon namin makakausap yung uh, specialist. And then very very helpful talaga sila kasi sa dami ng di inaadmit sa dami ng inaadmit na transfer namin tsaka di discharge namin sa emergency ang daming paperwork na inaasikaso nila sa dami ng uh, sinasan namin for tests and procedures ang dami na lang inaasikaso so sa inpatient world uh, sila din yung nag-aasikaso for example for example we're sending patients to uh, CT scan MRI sila yung nagpe-page ng porter ng housekeeper sila lahat uh, Care, uh, code 66 and Code Blue. Ano yung pinagkaiba ng Code 66 sa Code Blue? Code 66, ayun pala yung parang nagda-downhill nag yung pasyente. Yung kumbaga yung respiratory rate, respiratory rate niya is less than 8. Yung blood pressure niya, sa tingin mo is, uh, hindi na siya maganda, less than 80. At yung blood pressure niya naman is normal niya, is na, nasa may 120 or eh, over 80. And then yung... Oxygen saturation niya, yung normal is 94, and then ngayon is nasa may 79%. You can call a code 66. Code 66, meaning, uh, this is the team of IC nurses or emergency nurses na pupunta sa unit nyo. And then they will try to, uh, uh, their best para ma-stabilize ma, ma or ma-normalize yung condition ng pasyente. It will take them at least 10 to 15 minutes to, uh, Pa, pa, para makapunta sa unit nyo. So, as much as, as, much as possible, kung meron kang knowledge about uh, immediate uh, uh, ACLS or immediate uh, care uh, techniques sa mga pasyente na mga nagda-downhill, uh, mas maganda yan. Kasi tulad, tulad ko na nanggaling ako ng Unit 66, very, very ano talaga, as in, every now and then we get Code 66 and Code Blue. Code Blue yun talagang wala ng pulse yung pasyente and then you need to do CPR. Code blue is only applicable for CPR, like what I mentioned a while ago, is for R1 patient, R1 goes of care. So, ayun, I'm very, very lucky talaga na nag-work ako sa inpatient unit sa may unit 66. Kasi, once na talaga nag-code blue or code 66, lahat ng nurses doon, as in very, as in motivate, as in alam nila yung roles nila. May nag-insert na ng IV, may nag-check na ng blood sugar, may nag- May nag may kumukuha na talaga ng cart, may naglalagay na ng leads, may nag may nag may nag yung alam niyo yung life pack, may nagche-check na ng ECG, may nagche-check na may lalagyan na may naglalagay na ng paddles just in case na kailangan i-defib yung pasyente, may nag may nag may nagpa-prime na ng IV line just in case na ibolus yung pasyente, may nag asin lahat, asin wala akong masabi sa unit 66. Tapos ayun na, basta lahat uh, pagdating ng code Code blur, code 66 team, as in okay na yung pasyente, as in stabilis na yung pasyente. Kasi, code, 
I must say, yung mga nurses sa Unit 66 sa ako nag-work before, they're very, very trained sa mga very acute patients. And then, personal care. Uh, no one is exempted sa personal care. Kami mga nurses, LPN, RNs, healthcare aides, hindi ibig sabihin na nurse ka, exempt ka sa personal care. Kailangan mo mag-change ng pads. Uh, kailangan mo mag-reposition pa rin ng pasyente. Hindi ibig sabihin na RNs, hindi ka na pwede mag-change ng pads. Kailangan mo pa rin magpunas ng tae, best. Kailangan mo pa rin magpunas ng pwet. And it's a must, lalo na kapag nurse ka. Kasi ako, gusto ko nagpupunas ng puwet kasi lalo na kapag total kayo yung pasyente and then hindi mo pa na-auscultate yung back niya. Hindi mo pa nalilisten yung back niya. And this is the only time that I could listen to their back kasi once na na-reposition yung pasyente and na-turn siya sa back niya, nung ko lang malilisten yung kanyang likod kung mayroong adventitious sounds doon. And nung ko ma-assess yung back niya kung mayroong excoriated uh, skin. And then, at the same time, malalaman ko na rin, ma-assess ko na rin kung meron siyang pressure ulcer. Kaya gusto ko na rin talaga na tumutunod sa mga healthcare aides, sa mga PCTs. PCTs means, means patient care technician. Para, ma-assess ko na rin yung uh, skin ng pasyente, skin integrity ng pasyente. Meron kami tinatawag dito sa hospital na Voicera. Meron siyang parang maliit dito na parang communication tool namin na ginagamit uh, para matawagan yung bawat uh, team. So, for example, kailangan namin ng tulong sa healthcare aid or nurses, pinapress lang namin yung visera para matawagan namin sila and para makahingi ng tulong. So, hopefully sa, sa Pilipinas, hindi ko alam kung wifi ba siya or what, pero pwede ka, as in, very very good siya, very accessible siya, just in case we need some help. For example, na meron kaming, naalala ko meron kaming psych patient doon and then very aggressive siya. Good thing na may visera kami and we could call for help sa, sa my unit clerk. We were able to call emergency uh, uh, security right away. So, very, very appropriate and very talagang uh, maganda yung naka-invento ng visera na yun. Kasi we could always use it in case of emergency and in case we needed some help. And then, IV pumps, best. Uh, you need to be... Ve, uh, iba yung IV pumps na ginagamit sa ibang iba't mabansa, no guys? Meron kami tinatawag dito na PCA pumps. Para yun, para sa mga sa mga analgesics, sa mga opioids na na kailangan ng pasyente, lalo na kapag may, uh, hindi siya controlled na mga oral medications na continuous yung pain ng pasyente. Meron kami tinatawag na PCEA pumps, epidural. Uh, talagang train ka doon bago ka makapag uh, uh, makagamit noon. And, par and uh, kailangan, alam mo yung assessment ng pasyente, kailangan mo mag i-check yung bromage ng pasyente and then meron kami tinatawag na kangaroo pumps ayun yung man yung para sa NG or para sa may peg tube and meron kami tinatawag na simple Baxter IV pumps so kailangan mo maging familiar sa mga uh, pumps na yun ayun yung karamihan ng mga pumps na ginagamit namin dito sa Canada so hopefully no guys pero hindi kasi ako pwedeng pumunta ng hospital para lang gamitin nyo and para ipakita sa inyo paano gamitin nyo kasi hindi ako, hindi ako papayagan ng hospital kasi alam nyo na yung bawal yun um, assessment dito sa amin is focus assessment. Hindi kami pwede ditong maging general assessment kasi kapag nag general assessment kami guys, aabot na kami ng sham sham bago namin matapos yung assessment. Kasi kapag ginawa namin yung general assessment guys, baka namatay na yung pasyente or namiss namin uh, Namatay na yung pasyente bago namin mabigay yung, yung toon ng pansin na talaga namin dapat pagtuunan ng pansin na health na problem. So, for example, the patient comes with um, shortness of breath. O, syempre, check namin yung chest x-ray or yung oscultate namin yung lungs. Uh, eh, yun talaga, yun talaga yung focus assessment talaga yung ginagawa namin. Tapos, kapag wala kami nakita about chest x-ray lang, yung ECG, troponin, NT-Pro BNP, and then, doon kami mag-general assessment kung may problema pa sa iba. So, ganun yung ginagawa namin sa emergency, no? So, you guys need to be familiar with ABG and VBG and ECG. So, nung, nung uh, pumunta ko ng Canada, wala akong kaalam-alam about this rhythmia, about ECG reading, about normal sinus rhythm. So, guys, kung takot kayo magbasa ng ECG, guys, I always advise you guys mag-start na kayo magbasa ng ECG reading. Know the PQRST know the basic uh, atrial fibrillation, a flutter, know what 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 normal sinus rhythm is, sinus tachycardia, sinus bradi, uh, sinus arrhythmia. Kasi very, very important yun, lalo na kapag gusto nyo magtrabaho sa Canada. Kasi very basic knowledge ang ECG sa Canada. And kapag nag-hand, 
for example, nag ECG yung pasyente nyo, kapag hinad over sa'yo ng ECG technician, and di na, na miss mo yung problema, kung may PAC or may rapid ventricular response na yung pasyente, and na, miss, na miss mo yun, or kaya may sus ko may reverse ko kaya may end stem na yung pasyente at na mismo yun lagot ka and lagot yung doktor hindi mo nasabi sa doktor yun lagot yung buong department niyo so guys make sure na alam mo yung pagbabasa ng ECG VBG is venous blood gas ABG is uh, arterial blood gas dito sa emergency department kami nagda-draw ng VBG venous blood gas walang tourniquet yun kami nagsisend ng tube uh, para siyang needle para siyang syringe kami nagsisend sa, sa may sa may lab Kapag EBG, pinapage namin yung respiratory therapist para mag-draw ng EBG. Ano, chine-check namin doon yung HCO3, P PCO3, uh, HCO2, tsaka PO2, tsaka yung potassium, tsaka yung lahat ng electrolytes kung, kung wala roof wax siya. So guys, ang next na topic, ang next na isasample ko sa inyo guys, kung paano ako magbigay ng report sa incoming shift nurse guys, no? One eternity later. So guys, pasyon siya na kanina na po yung pag-vlog ko. And narealize ko lang haba-haba na pala na itong vlog na to. Hindi ko alam kung hahating ko sa dalawa or pagsagaan nyo ng panoorin ng mahabang-mahabang itong vlog na to. And then hopefully naman ma-enjoy nyo o kapulutan nyo ng aral to. But anyway guys, ito yung sample report na ibibigay ko sa inyo. And sa mga nagtatanong pala no, uh, yung patient ratio, uh, sa days, evenings, it differs. Meron kaming pwedeng 4 is to 1 or 5 is to 1. Uh, sa, sa, sa night shift naman is 6 to 1 or 7 is to 1 so kapag nagbreak yung uh, pasyent yung body nurse mo ikaw magkukover nun so kapag night shift for example short kayo magiging 7 is to 1 eh, ikaw magkukover ng patient ng body mo so 14 lahat ng patient mo for 45 minutes or for example nagbreak ng pasyente yung, yung body nurse mo ng 1 hour 20 minutes so for that span of 1 hour 20 minutes Ikaw, mag, ikaw mag-cover ng 14 patients na yun. And they are acute. So, bahala. Good luck na lang talaga, guys, no? But anyway, guys, ito yung sample report na gusto kong basahin sa inyo, guys. Na ginawa ko, it's not true, it's not, uh, gawa-gawa ko lang to, no? So, guys, let's start. Itong, itong sample report na to, isang pasyente para to, just imagine kung pito yung pasyente na kailangan mo bigyan ng report and minsan, iba-iba yung nurse na kailangan pagbigyan ng report. Iba't ibang uh, care hub din. So, good luck talaga. Anyway, so, Patient Ryan in room number 4, he's 34 year old, R1 goes of care, Eno times 3, uh, GCS 15 out of 15, he's from uh, Bethany Long Term Care Facility, he's admitted with cough and congestion, diagnosed with left lower lobe pneumonia, he's under uh, MTU, uh, history of asthma, diabetes, uh, prostate CA, hypertension, osteoarthritis, uh, he's currently on reverse isolation for uh, low neutrophils at 0 0.2, uh, WBC and CRP is elevated, doctor is aware. Uh, WBC at 16. He's currently on IV antibiotics of the Traxone and Flagyl until December the 2. Uh, then switch to Levofloxacin PO for 14 days. He's currently on prednisone, uh, 10 milligrams for 2 days, and then taper down to 5 milligrams for the next 3 days. Uh, the last blood sugar ch was checked at 1700 at uh, 80 millimole. He was given scheduled Umilin R at 6 units and then plus 2 units as per sliding scale. His magnesium level was 0.4. Uh, he was given uh, 4 grams of magnesium. Uh, the last, blood, sugar, uh, the, the last uh, blood pressure was just taken an hour ago. Uh, potassium was 2.9. It was replaced with 3 bags of KCL. SBP was a little bit elevated at 160. Uh, he was initially complaining of chest pain, mid-sternal, localized, non-radiating. ECG was done, sinus, normal sinus rhythm. Uh, troponin was elevated at 14. Uh, the pitch troponin was done at 1700. It's still at 14. Uh, cardio cardiology uh, was consulted uh, for possible echo on Monday. He was placed on 3 liters of oxygen. Uh, he's not on any home oxygen. He is still complaining of shortness of breath on exertion. Uh, we tried to downtrade the oxygen to room air. We, we did the road test as per order. It was unsuccessful on room air. He decided to like 82%. Uh, RT is following. ABG was done. PAO2 at 82%. Respirologist was consulted. He has a Foley outputted at 1500 mils. Uh, he has a wound on his right buttock. Uh, we put inodine and then methylx with border. He was repositioned every two hours via TAP system. Uh, we applied Basa cream to his uh, groin area. The plan is to continue with the antibiotic and awaiting cardio and respiratory uh, consult and then uh, wean oxygen as needed as required. 
Thank you. Ayan. So guys, ganyan ang reporting. So, uh, isang pasyente pa lang yun. So, as much as possible, kailangan mo ibigay ng buong story ng pasyente. Anong plan, anong kung bakit siya pumunta, anong, anong mga pasadya, anong, anong labs, anong medication siya, ano yung mga impertinent, impertinent information na kalagang, kalagang mo ibigay sa, sa next shift. So guys, so hopefully na-enjoy nyo itong vlog ko for today. Pasensya na akong medyo mahaba kasi pinagsama ko na yung unboxing na itong ring light and at the same time, pinagsama ko na rin itong inihingin yung sit-down video. Uh, thank you so much again for tuning in and then hopefully you guys subscribe. Bye for now!